Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special video showcase I'm going to be introducing you to a book that I absolutely love and it's been one of my complete go-to guides for the last two decades nearly or so. Now I've just had a look at the front of the book and this book was actually first printed in 2001 so again it is very old but it's very very relevant and um, the prices are somewhat off on some of the things as they will be over the time however of course it is a guide to Japanese and international transformers from generation one so they've not released any more anyway so the only thing that's out is really the prices uh, some of the pictures maybe look a bit dated but of course the content and and that's what it also all about really the content is fantastic and it's a book that I'm constantly using still to this day and I just love to go back and look at it to be fair and due to the popularity of how much uh, everybody else liked the looking at the other Japanese book this is another one of where I get my inspiration and I suppose yeah once or tick list shall we say so on the cover you've got uh, basically the Autobot leaders look so you've got Diatlas there you've got Jinrai as he's known in Japan Optimus Prime obviously Star Convoy oh sorry yeah he's known as Convoy in Japan and then Star Saver so let's have a look at this book it's so good i'm hopefully not going to go page for page um because you might want to get it yourself but to give you an idea of what inside is in it let's have a look so we've got some contents there so you've got introduction you've got pre-transformers so that's diaclone microman we'll have a quick look at some of the pages there and then we've got chapter two japanese transformers and then it talks about the different um categories that they that they put them all underneath so fight super robot live transformers is pretty much like seasons one and two uh, transformers 2010 again is like sort of season three of the sunbow cartoons and then of course we've got all the bits where they went and did their own thing so headmasters master force victory zone and then it's got a few other international and oddball and rare stuff it really is such a great book so you've got the introduction and acknowledgements there Funnily enough, one of the guys who did most of the pictures in here is none other than Chuck Lou from Artfire. So that's how long he's been going and that's why he really is the man to go to for your Japanese Transformers. So, for people who don't know, and I'm sure people do, and I don't really discuss it much when I'm doing my videos, but before Transformers there was Diaclone and there was Microman. And of course this is where a lot of the ideas came from. Diaclone there is Convoy, as he was known. Optimus Prime, of course. And of course there's a Microman version of Blaster. The main difference is the Microman range with things like your Soundwave, like your Blaster, um, and your guns. So all things that you could hold in your hand. Whereas the Diaclone range of things was like, like your vehicles, your Autobot cars and your jets and things like that. And you can see all these here. There's so many of them. There's the um, Battle Convoy set. That's incredibly rare, by the way, if you ever find that. And then, of course, you've got some of the other rare variants of the other colours so we've got a blue trailbreaker a red sun streaker and a yellow trailbreaker as well so with the diaclone they had lots of different coloured variants of the very very popular cars so that's obviously the prehistory there now we move on to chapter two which is japanese transformers and then we've got oh there we go we obviously got convoy there i'm lucky enough to have got one of them this year and then a few of these things you'll see they're all numbered and then funnily enough here's a jazz and there's a mirage you've got the numbers and the top right hand side um, and you can't tell if they change the names whereas you can with the gig stuff um, there's still just numbers on here but when it gets a bit further down the line on the autobot cars you will see a c sorry autobots in general not just the cars which sort of stood for cybertrons which is autobots and funnily enough right there two cassettes we've got the d for destrons and you can see that the cassettes came individually on card or in a little box rather than in twos like we had them in the UK and US or basically any Hasbro variant. Um, here's another very very rare Japanese piece. They did do a reissue of this but it was their original Astro Train was white and black. There's both of them together there so it shows you the full detail between the two but that is one of the very very rare Japanese original Transformers. Not a Diaclone, an actual Transformer. And then we're carrying on 2010. It obviously wasn't 2010. It was This was basically around about the time of the movie so you've got uh, your Predacon, your Predaking, uh, your Scourge, your gift sets. Of course, that gift set was exclusive at the time in Japan. Moving along, and this is where we're going to start to get really sort of interesting now for the people like myself and like you guys who are, who are finding themselves slowly, slowly slipping down the rabbit hole of the other variants. So it starts off, of course, with normal Headmasters. They've just got different packaging. 
they used polystyrene inserts instead of bubbles for pretty much everything so you haven't got to worry about bubbles falling off and stuff this was their exclusive redeco retool as well of sound blaster which was of course Soundwave. they made it able to put two cassettes in his chest and give buzzor a slightly different uh, making and then here we go this this is a grail of mine there he is on that side art fire and i'm lucky enough to have the other guy there stepper so these were two exclusive target masters and this could be one of the reasons why they didn't have a target master scourge and cyclonus in japan because they used the two target masters on these right then we've got blasters uh sound sorry not the twin cast was what he was renamed and again they've made his chest able to hold two cassettes in and then here's some very very rare Japanese exclusive cassettes Graffi, Noizu and I think one of them is called Decibel that's it yeah this one and they combined as well which is brilliant and as I say these are going to get even more and more interesting now I'm going to try not to in every single page but there's just so much gold on every single page there's the train bots there they are combined to Raiden there they are in the boxes and of course there they are in train mode and of course as with pretty much all the combiners they had a gift set as well so they really knew how to market and get the figures out there okay here we go let's get really interesting master force and right there is oh got a terrible glare but that is metal hawk and he was a japanese exclusive only pretender and he's got die cast parts and he's made of metal the inside part and he's one of the feature characters in the cartoon master force and then here we go so we've got the pretenders there funnily enough i've got both of them and i've done videos on both of them you can see that they just made the packaging look that little bit more interesting then we've got a redeco of night beat is it Nightbeat? yes it will be this is minerva she was a lady transfer as well or minelva how are you going to pronounce it and again, she is crazy rare. I'm not lucky enough to hold one of them, own one of them yet. Right, here we go. So we've got the Darkwings Redecos, Buster and Hydra. Again, there's videos of these. If you're unsure, you can go to the playlists, look under Japanese exclusive Transformers, and there's videos of them. Same for Overlord, although I don't actually have the Overlord Japanese packaging. Again, excuse this glare, it's really dark in the UK with the horrible weather at the moment. And yeah, I've done Overload videos. Um, and showing them in the different modes as well. Great, great figure. Another figure here that's eluding me still at the moment is Browning, and that's just another, it's a transformable gun. So whenever I do get a hold of him, it's gonna be really hard to get him shipped into the UK. I'm gonna have to transform him into robot. And now here we come to some real grail pieces. So we've got, there is Black Zarek, and I know he's just a redeco, with a slightly tiny little retool um, on his head um, of Scorponok. And then we've got Blue Bacchus, who was, of course, Crossblades. And we've got Black Shadow, who was, of course, Thunderwing. And that price there, $265 to $300, is way out. <laughs> way, way, way out. I wish it was that much. And then, funnily enough, this was the book that I picked up just to show you on the um, Fast Track video. There is Black Zarek in all his glory. And if we move along, we've got Double Clouder, which was a repaint of Double Dealer. I'm sorry, it looks like I'm literally going for every single page. Um, and there, of course, is Jinrai and God Bomber. And there they are, funnily enough, comparing next to the standard Hasbro Power Master of Optimus Prime. So the Japanese Takara version on the left has the chromed parts and the silver weapons, whereas the Hasbro one has the cream. And it just doesn't look as good. I've got both. But then, of course, they had this mode where you could combine them with God Bomber. We didn't even see that until I think it was actually, yeah, maybe it was 2001 when they did the gift set. But we never saw it in Generation 1 anyway. And here is Grand Maximus, who is a redeco of Fortress Maximus. But he's got his huge sword. He's got a little pretender as well. Again, not lucky enough to own one of them yet. But never say never. Never say never. Right, we're moving on to Victory now. This is the one that I've done a couple of videos on as well, Land Cross, and this is the one that I just think is absolutely amazing. So there they are all in vehicle mode. There they are in vehicle mode with the accessories to be like an armoured mode. And there they are in bot mode. And if you remember, this is the one that you could literally turn, you could transform and merge them with them all. It's crazy, the amount of combinations that you can do. And it shows a few of them 
there. So the individual robots could combine as well. It's got rid of that glare, hasn't it? That's good. So, yep, Land Cross, one of my absolute favourites. Then we've got Road Caesar. I've done a few videos on this. I really need to update it as well, so I will be doing another one of them. Uh, I find out to get rid of the glare, tilt it forward. So there we go. So that's Road Caesar, the gift set. And there's the individual ones. And when I turn over, you can see um, Star Saber, funnily enough. Star Saber, you've got both types of packaging. You've got the original box there and the new box there. Star Saber was the leader from Victory. And the reason why I got another Star Saber is so I can show you them in all these modes. So rather than have to transform him, because it's very scary transforming these, this is how versatile he is. So once you've got him in the large jet there, you've got him in a base there, you've got him as a large robot, and then you've got him combined with Victory Leo into a jet as well. This is Great Shot, who is a slight retool of... Is it six gun? I think it's six gun. Can't even think. Completely lost me. Six shot, sorry. Of course it is six shot. Um, so... Again, same principle, change into six modes, but slightly different head, slightly different tooling on a couple of things. There is Victory Leo, and they've put these separately for some reason, but Victory Leo is amazing. Again, I've got another one of him, because he can then combine and they can make Victory Sabre. Amazing. There's the Japanese version of Countdown, just a different box. And Dino King. Dino King is a repaint, and they use different Pretender shells for Monstructor. There you go. Again, I'm not lucky enough to own any of these. That's why I like this book, because I get to look at things which I can't, ha can't, well, haven't gotten. Sometimes they're a bit out of reach. Lyra Kayser here, mentioned him in one of my videos. I've got that gift set. That gift set is in much better condition than mine. But again, they also use the individual boxes as well. So you can build it up. And then there, I mentioned him on the video the other day. I think he's going to be one of my next ones to get hold of. Desirous. Deathsaurus, some people call him, but I've always known him as Desirus. And these are, of course, the Breast Force, which I did mention. And there he is in his alternate mode. Amazing. Great big dragon. Perfect. Okay, moving on to Zone. Um, so this is, a, again, like the time of the MicroMasters. I've mentioned with Diatlas and the big powered set. They were really big on the MicroMasters because for exactly that. So what they did was they made huge, huge play sets. So they redecoed Metroplex and called him Metro Titan. And he's a Decepticon now, you can see. And they also obviously connected up the MicroMaster bases as well. Not just the uh, combiner leaders like that. So obviously that's um, one of the MicroMaster play sets they're attached to him. And there's a comparison of the two. Pretty much identical, just slightly different colours. Right, let's carry on through this. And there we've got the exclusive Autobot Skyhopper repaint. And he's called... What's he got? It doesn't got his name there. It's just said there, the white version of Skyhopper. And it is greatly desired. There, of course, is... I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you've seen enough of it from me. The big powered gift set, and there they are all individually in their boxes. You'll be seeing more of that in actual videos, but in fact, while we're here, you can see a couple of different modes. So there's Sonic Bomber in one mode, there is uh, Road Fire in the mode that I showed you with the launching base and the tank, there is Diatlas, there's Diatlas, one of his base modes. One of his sort of jet attack modes. Again, so many, so many different modes. And there, of course, is the big power jet. But the reason why I'm showing you this page is because there are the train bots in their zone packaging. So these were just reissued a couple of years later, but in zone packaging. I suppose you could compare them to how they Hasbro did the classics line with regards to the gold boxes. They just reissued them in different boxes. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what Takara has done there. Right, moving on. The, con the story continues. And we've got Sky Gary, um, and we've got a lot of these little six combiners. Now, these were, were all exclusive to Japan, but then I think it was either the um, Classics or Universe line, which Hasbro then incorporated them and then used them again, at least a decade or so later, which we'll have a look in a bit more in a second when we get there. Here's Grandis. He's another very, very rare piece. And um, again, he can combine with a number of other of the sets to make a huge, huge play set. He can combine with Sky Gary and Star Convoy, as he was called. Convoy was um, the Japanese name for 
Optimus Prime. I'm doing an updated video on him. There is one on my channel, but I really need to give it an update because you've got a base mode and you've got, of course, his truck trailer mode, but he does have a battery working operated motor and I know that mine works. So I'm gonna, again, take great pleasure in doing a new video in that soon. So this was Six Builder, as I'm sure he was called. And this is the one that I think they retooled to be Devastator, and you can sort of see why. Yes, it is definitely Six Builder, and again, I've done a video on him. Six Wing was the one they retooled for Superior. No, I keep saying retooled, but I mean redecoed, sorry. Redecoed for Superior. This guy, Six Turbo, was a mini Defensor. So again, these were out, you know, a full decade at least before Hasbro did the Classics or Universe line, whichever it was with them. And then here they are in their little gift sets as well. Lovely, brilliant, brilliant toys. Um, then we move on to some of the, what were the European exclusives. In fact, I'll look at that in a second. But in Japan, they double box them and then put them like as a versus pack. So we've got what was, would be Scorch and Falcon, I think in the bottom right one, but they uh, just packed them up as a double, which was brilliant. So moving on, we've got a few G2 things and the Japanese only exclusive versions of them. And then we've got another little section here called Other International Transformers. And this is quite interesting as well, because you've got the Estrella, is it Estrella? I think it is, let me make sure I've got that right, rather than, which is, they got all the different colored mini bots and there's a whole world of mini bots out there so there's a green cliff jumper i've got a white one i'll do a video on that soon and there in fact oh there he is there's a white one and then they've got yellow wind charger blue wind charger and so many different colored bumblebees and all these again are way before all the ko's there's a whole crazy crazy world out there of of yeah of, of the mini bots they and they fetch some crazy prices so here we've got some different packaging variations we've got mb variants so milton bradley which was a, um, a games company at one point there is the infamous red tracks and you can see it says mb on the bottom of the corner of the, the box and there he is is again the infamous red tracks uh they've known him as road rage with the masterpiece range obviously he was an actual figure beforehand we've got a italian gig Hound, much, much better condition than mine. Gig was obviously the Japanese, not Japanese, sorry, the Italian company that made Transformers under the Takara guys, under the Takara name rather. So that's why they're very similar and they use the little boxes as well as, um, no, as the same as the, same, the, the Japanese versions. Then of course we've got some Action Masters here. That's the Euro Action Masters, but they've got the, I should email Chuck. They've actually got the wrong parts on them, but yep. Yeah, so they're the European Action Masters. I've started to do a few videos on them. More rare Euro Action Masters with the Action Masters Elite. A slicer, there's a video on him. I've yet to do one on Thunderwing. So these, as I say, were things that um, the Americans didn't really see, maybe until G2. Um, they've been also known as the in-between. But these were actually, in Europe, um, released under the Generation 1 banner and continuity of figures. So that's what it's sort of saying here. And then if we're going to just flip through these, because you will have seen some of these as, as Generation 2 figures. Um, but as I say, they just released a year or so before in the UK and everywhere. Now what we've got here is pretty much what I do. It's different variants, different languages, different nationalities with regards to all the MicroMaster boxes. You've seen that I've got some French-Canadian versions, some Dutch versions, and funnily enough, very apt at the moment. Here is some of the gold classic carded versions. And there we go. So these are the ones that I'm pretty much trying to complete. There's that Oslat, the Spanish one. And of course there is a Jazz there as well. So these are, as I say, they are all officially Generation 1 figures. Just released at different times in different parts of the world. Now we're moving on to some Generation 2 figures, and then you've got some oddball stuff in there. The only reason I've stopped in this is because some of these are just fantastic pieces, and again, absolute grails to get hold of. So you've got the VSZ set there, which was Sunstreaker, Skids, and Buzzor. I'm saying Buzzor, I'm pretty sure it is. That doesn't look like laser beak to me. Then you've got a Goodbye Convoy set. Now, what this means is, obviously, in the movie, of course, he died. And so did Red Alert, and unfortunately, so did Mirage. So they did a Goodbye Convoy set. They also did a Goodbye Megatron set, which, funnily enough, is on the other side. And, of course, Megatron and Starscream both died. 
both incredible sets, incredible sets. Super rare to get hold of, very, very good, amazing things. And then we've got things with like the little Power Masters. I've done a video on them. They were just an extra three set of Power Masters they did. And then they also did things like this, Transformer Juniors, which were just smaller. They weren't as small as the world's smallest Transformers, but they were just a junior scale Dane version. There's obviously Convoy Optimus Prime there as well. So as you can see, and I really have talked loads and loads about all this, and you can see why it's such an interesting book. Again, it was printed in 2001, but they've not made any, the figures stopped. They stopped making them about 92, didn't they? So it's not as if they've managed, they've missed anything out or anything's changed. All that's changed really is, of course, the price value. And I always find that price value doesn't really matter anyhow, because I think it all depends on what that certain collector is willing to pay. If it's so out of their price range, they're not going to buy it. Whereas on the other hand, if it's attainable, I'm sure they will. Uh, the other big difference that they did in Japan compared to the UK and everywhere else was see all the DK, D, DKs, <laughs> decoys that came with... Um, they were packed actually with the figures on Hasbro cards. I've got a couple on the throttle bots you might have seen, whereas they actually sold them there in full sets. So you can make sure you get them all, which I think was a really good idea. And then we've just got some other exclusive Japanese paraphernalia, Battle Beasts. That's the thing I'm trying not to buy. They were, um, they were in, a, I think they were in cartoons as well, to be honest. But they actually were in the Japanese uh, victory. Thing, cartoon and I say I'm trying not to buy them these just came with a collection that I brought so you may remember these in the UK they had their own cartoon and toys as well I'm sure they did I definitely remember them because I had them as a child but they first appeared in victory and there is pictures of all of them as well if they interest you you can find out about them and here we go we've just got some other as it calls it oddball stuff so we've got catalogue excerpts uh, books jigsaws stamps uh, play sets, pencil cases, there's the infamous mail away Pepsi Prime. I wish it was four hundred to four hundred and fifty dollars. Anyway, we won't discuss that. But yeah, because uh, it's way more than that basically, it's way more than that now. And then of course here we go. Duvets, beddings, pillows. As you can see, I really like this book. It's so good. Um yeah, for exactly that reason. It's just got loads of information on the figures that you might not even have seen okay sometimes you can see a couple of pictures if you just type the name into tf wiki and things like that but to actually hold something physical in your hands like this and be able to look at you know there's browning one of the figures that is totally on my list it's a brilliant book it's a brilliant book it's a brilliant read there's lots of interesting facts in it um and yes it's helped me exponentially uh in my pursuit of the japanese transformers because and I suppose, of course, when this book was printed, there was really no information out there at all. So, well done, J.E. Alvarez. And as I say, Chuck Liu, ironically enough, he did a load of the pictures for it as well. But there you go. That is another book that I use pretty much day to day. I pick it up, I have a look, and then I work out what I'm going to be, well, plan hopefully what I can get next, etc. But yeah, hope you enjoyed looking at it. Um, if you do get hold of it, yeah, let me know. Drop a comment on the video. Manage to find one if you like it too, etc. Um, I'm sure that they'll be available somewhere because how old they are. But there you go. There it is. The unofficial guide to Japanese and international Transformers. Hope you enjoyed looking at it. And as I say, let me know. Give me some comments if you like it, if you've got it, if you use it. And of course, all of you, please do take care.